Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the final press conference after today's European Council and Euro Summit. I first invite the President of the European Council, Donald Tusk, to take the floor. Thank you, Preben, dear friends, dear colleagues. A year ago, we promised concrete steps to strengthen the economic and monetary union. Today, leaders delivered on this promise. First, with an agreement to create a common backstop for the single resolution fund. And second, we agreed to give the European stability mechanism stronger powers to prevent and manage financial crisis. These two decisions, which mean changing the ESM treaty as soon as possible, significantly strengthen the monetary union. Additionally, finance ministers will accelerate work on a euro area budgetary instrument. Importantly, it will be adopted in an inclusive format by all the member states in the context of the long-term EU budget. Today, leaders also adopted conclusions on the single market, climate change, migration, disinformation, and the fight against racism and xenophobia. On disinformation, I want to highlight the concern among leaders that this threat to our democracies is deliberate, large-scale, and systemic. And it is not going away, but rather growing. We are determined to counter this threat. The actions proposed by the Commission and the External Action Service should be implemented immediately by the appropriate authorities well ahead of the European elections. I want to close by thanking Chancellor Kurz for a very energetic and delivery focused Austrian presidency. Your achievements speak for themselves, like the continued reduction of illegal migration to Europe the start of talks with Egypt and the League of Arab States, the progress on internal security, or the banking package. Vielen Dank, Sebastian. Thank you. And now, President Jean-Claude Juncker of the European Commission. Yes, Mr. President, Mr. Chancellor. Dieses, uh, war this summit was uh, a meeting uh, which uh, has uh, demonstrated that we are approaching uh, projects uh, which require decision and decisiveness. I would like to thank the Austrian Council Presidency and the Federal Chancellor because the Austrians uh, have uh, listened uh, to the European Union and uh, have shown true leadership. Now, that is not always the case of all presidencies. Uh, not uh, all presidencies necessarily fit uh, that mode, but in this case, the Austrian presidency did. In the European Parliament, uh, a great deal of uh, criticism was uh, leveled at the Austrian presidency, but today I only heard words of praise. Everyone has praised the federal chancellor and the Austrian federal government in uh, all of its uh, various variants, because under their leadership, we have made true progress. This morning, under the chairmanship of Donald, we discussed the reform of the Eurozone. My impression is that we are making progress, but that progress is not sufficiently rapid. However, that's nothing new. That's always the case. The Commission had put forward its own proposals for the reform of the Eurozone in, in May, and at that juncture we proposed two separate functions, one to support structural reforms which would be combined with an instrument to encourage the rapprochement 
Et puis, to the Eurozone of those member states who are not yet members. And then secondly, we would have a stabilisation mechanism which would help us to cope interne. with uh, both external and internal asymmetric uh, shocks. There is a wide-scale support for the mechanism for us to help us to cope interne. with uh, both external and internal asymmetric uh, shocks. There is a wide-scale support for the first instrument providing structural. support for structural less enthusiasm about the normal shocks. Nonetheless, the European Council has reached agreement that work should then continue on the basis of the Commission proposal, which was proposed at the end of May, and then, of course, uh, there may be possible uh, amendments following the usual legislative procedure. Taking both of these elements uh, together, we will have uh, a volume of 50 billion euros, which we would then like uh, to have included in the MFF. I am, therefore, fairly satisfied with the outcome of today's discussions even though I would have uh, liked uh, there be, to be a uh, spontaneous movement to approve the stabilization mechanism which we proposed. Uh, but uh, I would like to say that it is quite clear that it will be included in the multi-annual financial framework because in the long term we cannot live without instruments which will enable us to react to external shocks. I'm less happy because uh, the Commission has proposed seven initiatives. Five of them are close to agreement, but it was not possible to convince colleagues today to adopt these five proposals because uh, there were the two missing elements. I don't have to explain this because you are specialists of this uh, question, and uh, we'll pursue our, our work. On this information and dialogue, there was broad agreement amongst uh, colleagues that we should continue as a commission with our citizens' dialogue. We have organized since uh, the very beginning of our mandate uh, 1,300 citizen dialogues, reaching 160,000 people. That's not enough. I don't know how many people are following these debates uh, on. Uh, uh, they are, uh, the, on the technical basis they have. There are more of them, but that's not enough. But nevertheless, we are continuing this explanation um, exercise. And on fake news, uh, we proposed weeks ago some instruments, but the fake news are not only to be found in the camp of the fake newsers. I made it very clear to the European Council that some of the Prime Ministers sitting around there, they are at the origin of fake news. When Mr. Orban, for example, is saying that I'm responsible and guilty for the Brexit, fake news. When he's saying that migrants are responsible for the Brexit, fake news. So, Let's not put all the responsibility on others. Let's check in our round who is the news faker. Thank you. Finally, Federal Chancellor Sebastian Thank Kurz you. of the Austrian Presidency. Please, sir. Vielen Dank. Herr Präsident Tusk, Herr Präsident Juncker, sehr geehrte Thank you, President Tusk, Damen President Juncker, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank you for the good cooperation with the Council and the Commission. It hasn't always been easy to work with 28 member states and three institutions, but during our presidency, the cooperation with Council and Commission has really worked very well. So uh, I'm very grateful to you for that. It's been an intensive six months for us. Uh, during these uh, last six months, but I think it has been successful. We've had 35 trialogues with the European Parliament and we've concluded them. Uh, we've managed to achieve 60 agreements in the Council. 
Of course, the, the big overriding issue has been Brexit. That's overshadowed everything else. Uh, the last two days were, have been uh, useful to, uh, to discuss certain questions with uh, Theresa May and uh, create some more clarity. And um, there will be a vote in the British Parliament in January. And the deal that was negotiated is a good deal for both, both sides. And we hope that this deal will find support in both parliaments eventually. As presidency, we have fo tried to focus debate on a few points, and I would like to remind you of those briefly now. Under the motto, a Europe that protects, we've tried to focus debate on three issues, security, protecting um, our, our well-being by competitiveness, and being active, Europe being active outside its borders, beyond its borders, to export security rather than import insecurity. In the area of security, I'm very grateful that all member states have agreed on a declaration on the fight against anti-Semitism. We held a conference with um, Jewish communities from all over Europe, and in many countries, uh, Jewish people no longer feel safe in Europe and are leaving Europe to uh, go to uh, Israel. So I'm very pleased that we were able to adopt that declaration. Also on security, the fight against illegal migration. Here our aim was to strengthen Frontex and to um, increase personnel resources. Here we are supporting the Commission proposal. Unfortunately, there are some member states who are still blocking that proposal. The strengthening of Frontex's mandate has uh, succeeded as regards deportations and also the strengthening of the Frontex mandate regarding cooperation with third countries, which is particularly important for cooperation with the transit countries to reduce illegal migration flows. I am pleased that three years after 2015, we've now reached a point where illegal migration has been significantly reduced. The number of arrivals in Europe has fallen by 95%, and the central Mediterranean route has been closed de facto. In Italy, for several weeks now, there have been no more arrivals. However, too many people are still drowning in the Mediterranean, but many, many fewer than drowned in 2015 and 2016. The second uh, focus was, pre pre was preserving, protecting uh, welfare, well-being. I'm very pleased uh, that on completion of the digital market, we managed to launch a number of decisions uh, and on the MFF, we have been positively surprised that at the end of the day, we have managed to pass on a ready negotiation box to the Romanian presidency. And, and as an Austrian, allow me to say a word about the West Balkans, because this is particularly close to our hearts. In particular, uh, building on the Bulgarian presidency's achievements, there is now a new dynamic for the West Balkans, and several new chapters have been opened. Thank you for the good cooperation. Let me just uh, add one point because I, I omitted to mention the fact that I'm very happy with the work which the Austrian presidency has done on the future MFF. This uh, is uh, the fifth occasion I have witnessed work on the MFF, and uh, this is uh, the occasion on which we tabled our proposal very early, but uh, this is the first time that the Council Presidency has made such rapid headway, and I'm very glad that the Austrian Presidency has been in a position uh, to uh, produce uh, the negotiating box, which will enable the Romanian Presidency to work uh, to make rapid progress, it was uh, decided that uh, after the uh, Romanian uh, the EP elections, it will be possible for this uh, to be taken up once again. And the Romanian Council presidency will also be taking up rapid work on this subject uh, as soon as it takes up office. And this, I think, is all to the credit of the Austrian presidency because they have been able to hold wide-ranging debates and discussions on these very technical elements 
and this was a ta task which they have completed uh, with uh, a great deal of skill. Just one last word on the protection of our external borders, and I must say that this is one area where I'm slowly losing my patience. I said this morning, but this is not something which uh, a president should say to the council, but I did say that uh, there was a white elephant in the room, and that is hypocrisy. Everyone is uh, urging us and inviting us uh, time and time again uh, to uh, increase uh, the controls at our external borders uh, and uh, everything uh, which we have in place is to be stepped up. We had uh, a proposal, 10,000 further officials uh, up to 2027. I read an interview with the Chancellor Kurtz who said, well, it's going to take too long. We need it to step up uh, these uh, reinforcements uh, and the work on this, which is why we came forth with new proposals which said that by the end of 2020 we had to have 10,000 officers in place uh, doing the job. We asked them to, from years now, all member states uh, have been uh, saying everywhere to the papers in their parliaments that we have to step up the protection of our external borders, which is why I uh, was rather taken aback to see a certain number of countries, uh, particularly those who are in the front line, are now refusing to even contemplate strengthening our external borders. So please never tell me again that we should strengthen our external borders if you don't implement our proposals. For a few questions, and we start with the gentleman on the fifth row, Jim. Thank you. Uh, Jim Brunston from the Financial Times. Two questions, if I may. Uh, firstly, Theresa May in her press conference said that the UK would be holding talks in coming days with the EU on Brexit. Is it possible to know exactly what the process is going to be now, the order of events going forward from today, and basically when we're going to be back here dealing with Brexit again? And secondly, on Euro reform, the statement that's been adopted today covers certain issues. Other issues are not mentioned, uh, issues to do with further developing the banking union with a deposit guarantee scheme, for example. Is what's set out in the statement today it? In other words, is this now what's going to be done to complete the euro? And is that enough to make the eurozone ready to withstand the next crisis? Thank you. Our intention is, and it was uh, clear from the very beginning of this process, that we want to facilitate the ratification process on the continent and, of course, in the UK. Mm. Yesterday's uh, conclusions are quite clear, I think, that, and uh, we have to treat it as a that's a good sign. I mean that we are ready to reconfirm our assurances and our goodwill and good faith when it comes to so-called um, backstop. I have no mandate to organize any further negotiations. We have to exclude any kind of reopening our negotiations on the withdrawal agreement. But, of course, we will stay here in Brussels, and I'm always at Prime Minister Theresa May's disposal. It's, it's my job and my, and my pleasure, of course, to, to be in contact with Prime Minister on all relevant issues. It's good to be informed that Donald will stay in Brussels <laughs> over Christmas. I will not stay in Brussels over Christmas because I have this so is many. also a very good information. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah that, gives you, that gives you some relief, no? Because I had so many meetings with uh, Prime Minister May, who is a good friend, and I'm admiring her because this is a woman of great courage, doing her job in the best way possible. And um, so I'm supporting her, not as far as all the content elements are concerned, but uh, I'm supporting the way she's dealing with that, um, with that matter. What we have to discuss now is the future relation. 
and to be decided yesterday under the chairmanship of uh, uh, President Tusk, that a second after an approval by the two parliaments, the British one and the European one, and before signature, we'll start the negotiations on the future relations. Because I was following second by second the debate in the House of Commons, and I noted that there is a deep mistrust in the House when it comes to the European Union. That's not a good basis for future relations, but in order to prove them that we mean this seriously, the negotiations on the future relations, and that we mean it seriously, that we don't want to have this backstop being a permanent instrument, then we have to discuss and to start our negotiations. And uh, it was crystal clear that nobody in the room did agree to reopening in any way the uh, withdrawal agreement. The withdrawal agreement will stay. The uh, political declaration will not be joined to the withdrawal agreement because these are two different instruments, the one legal, the other uh, political. But um, I, I, I think that we have to bring down the temperature. And uh, these attacks coming from Westminster against Europe, against the European Commission, will not be responded in the same way by the European Commission and by the European Union. Although I would like to do it. Ah, Euro. There was a question. Yeah, yeah, about Euro. Uh, Euro what was the question? Euro zone. Euro area. No, no, the question. It was, um, ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cap capital market union. Well, it was, yeah. Is, is there yeah, more yeah. that goes beyond I, I was insisting today? when addressing colleagues in the Council that we'll continue to work on the completion of the capital market union, included the common deposit uh, guarantee. Because we do think that the risks are going down. The battle loans have been halved since 2014. So these major risks do no longer exist. But we have to work, nevertheless, on the risk uh, uh, reduction. And uh, so our proposals, those we have made concerning the capital market union, will be taken under exam as they are by the relevant council. Thank you. And the next question goes to the gentleman in the third row. Peter Fritz, Austrian Television, ORF, Herr Bundeskanzler and vielleicht the other Herren auch. Federal Chancellor, perhaps the other gentleman too. You um, mentioned the motto, a Europe that protects. Frontex has more powers now, but it's taking a long time to increase its staff to 10,000. What more can you do? It seems that there is a complete uh, blockage, which President Juncker mentioned. So what about what's happened to this Europe that protects? Well, maybe I could kick off on this one. If you see this development in comparison to previous years, it's extremely positive. In 2015, I stated our opinion very clear. We had been arguing for years about the distribution of um, migrants within the European Union. And I was very skeptical uh, in 2015 as to whether we could solve that um, problem. But in other issues, such as protecting the external border and cooperating with third countries, we've made a lot of progress over the last few months and also during the Bulgarian presidency. From my point of view, the meeting in June was a turning point. We had a stronger focus on the external dimension and on cooperation with third countries. We would have liked to see the increase in personnel, um, as would the Commission, um, but um, the member states, those, uh, unfortunately those on the external border, are holding up the proposal, but the mandate has been strengthened, and this is decisive, because cooperation with transit countries will really reduce the number of people embarking on the trip to Europe. 
at the moment we have a situation where when people set out for Europe and they're rescued by Euro European ships, they are taken after their rescue to Europe. But if the Libyan Coast Guards, who we're supporting, who are providing training for, if they can rescue more people, if the Egyptians can rescue more people, then once they've rescued people, the, the ship won't continue to Europe, but the people will be brought back to, to Africa. And this will deter people from setting off in the first place, because that, that uh, way to Europe will be closed. You'll be just taken back to North Africa. And that rem removes the basis of the business of the uh, traffickers in human beings as well. And um, people will not want to take the risk anymore. So the strengthening of Frontex's mandate has been uh, decisive, and uh, Donald Tusk and myself have talked to Egypt. We've started talks with Egypt. That has been very helpful. Italy and other states ha are supporting the Libyan Coast, Yard, Coast Guard, and this all means that today 95, there are 95 percent fewer arrivals than in 2015. And as regards the central Mediterranean route, we have zero arrivals at the moment, so de facto that route has been closed. With the permission of the President, could I just uh, add uh, that uh, this uh, whole question of extending our core protection is an urgent matter. If we had 10,000 more officers on the external borders, that would be 8.7% uh, uh, of uh, our border protection agents and since everyone is saying we have to step up protection this I think uh, would mean that it would uh, only be understandable and plausible for member states uh, to actually put the men where their, their mouths are and ensure that we do have adequate protection at our external borders to one question of our colleague from the FT uh, concerning the euro reform we were presenting in the last weeks some proposals reinforcing the international role of the euro. This was not contested during the meeting uh, we, had, uh, uh, we had today, so it makes part of the overall package concerning the euro uh, reform. Thank you. We'll take one last question. Yes, the gentleman over there. Yes, please. Yes, please. Hi, it's a question for Mr. Juncker. I'm David Gomez from the Spanish newspaper Aquí Europa. I would like to know what were you saying to Teresa May in the video we saw this morning. Thank you. Da, da, da. <laughs> we were not dancing. I think at the very first moment, prima facie, as the Spanish could say if they were fluent in Latin, she thought that I did criticize her by saying yesterday night that the British position was nebulous. I didn't, by the way, know that this word does exist in English, parce que nebuleux. I didn't know that this is translated in nebulous, but I did not refer to her, but to the overall state of the debate in Britain. As I told you earlier, I was following the debate in the House, and I can't see where the British Parliament is heading at. And that's why I was saying that this was nebulous, foggy in, in English, so it was not, uh, I was not addressing her. And in the course of the morning, after having checked what I said yesterday night, she was kissing me. And if you allow me, Preben, I, I would like to underline one thing. After what I've read and what I've heard in some newspapers and, and TV stations, we have treated Prime Minister May with the greatest respect, all of us. And... Uh, We really appreciate the efforts um, by the Prime Minister to ratify our common agreement. Uh, my impression is that, in fact, we, we have treated Prime Minister May with, with, uh, with a much greater empathy and respect than, than some British MPs, for sure.
No, I, I have to add that uh, Theresa May is a good friend of us. We have the highest respect for the British uh, Prime Minister because she has to deliver a, a very difficult job. The three of us, in fact, the two of us, we were Prime Ministers. We had sometimes to face uh, motions asking for our resignation. It will happen to Sebastian in a short period of time. <laughs> and so... It already happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so we are yeah, sympathizing with uh, Mrs. May. I have the highest respect for the British Prime Minister. With may, this? I say, may I say just one sentence because I, I was in the media and I think not all uh, rumors, uh, I was in the meeting, not in the media, and uh, not, all, not all rumors in the, in the media really go in line with how the meeting was. I think the problem is just that we have two different positions, but that's all. Uh, Theresa May uh, was, uh, I think, a tough negotiator in the meeting and also uh, made her point very clear. And on the other side, the EU27 are united, which is good, and also were able to make our point clear. So I think not all the rumors about uh, the meeting are probably true. Thank you, Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. With this, I conclude the press conference, the last press conference of the year, and wish you all a Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday. Chancellor Kurz, for a very energetic and delivery-focused Austrian presidency. Your achievements speak for... I have this mask not spoken, but this time it was that so. I have heard many criticisms on the address of the Austrian President. I have heard in the Rat only love. All 28 have the Chancellor so in a row. J'ai eu l'impression que nous avançons, mais que nous avons fait, pour ce qui est du, de ce que d'un terme impropre on appelle le budget de la zone euro, des propositions au mois de mai, vers la fin du mois de mai, où nous n'y sont pas encore, et puis euh, une fonction stabilisatrice pour lutter contre les chocs asymétriques sur la deuxième euh, fonction, qui est stabilisatrice euh, pour lutter contre les, euh, les chocs externe et parfois pris ensemble, correspondent à un montant et un volume de 50 euh, milliards que nous voulons introduire dans le... Dans le je suis assez content de la discussion d'aujourd'hui, bien que j'aurais souhaité qu'il y ait une génération spontanée au choc externe. As far as migration is concerned, I'm less happy. Because, uh, but the fake news are not only to be found. Theresa May, noch einmal um, einige Fragen zu diskutieren und vielleicht auch da und dort mehr Klarheit zu schaffen. Und ich hoffe wirklich inständig, dass es im Jänner zu einer Abstimmung im britischen Parlament kommt und uh, zusammenfassen. Unter dem Motto Ein Europa, das schützt, haben wir auf drei Bereiche versucht zu fokussieren. Auf Sicherheit. Hier war unser Ziel vor allem die Stärkung von Frontex und auch die personelle Aufstockung. Bei der personellen Aufstockung unterstützen wir weiterhin eisern den Kommissionsvorschlag und mehrere Kapitel eröffnet werden konnten. Vielen Dank für die gute Zusammenarbeit. Ich, ich würde gerne hinzufügen, ein Paar der Patience. J'ai dit ce matin, mais un Präsident ne devrait pas dire ça, au Conseil, and secondly, on Euro reform, the statement that's been adopted today covers certain issues. Other issues are not mentioned. Uh, issues to do with further developing the banking union. There is a maze disposal. It's, it's my job and my, and my pleasure, of course, to, to be in contact with the Prime Minister on all. And we decided yesterday, under the chairmanship of uh, uh, President Tusk, that a second after an approval by the two parliaments, the British one, 
that we mean it seriously, that we don't want to have this backstop being a permanent instrument, then we have to discuss and to start our negotiations and uh, uh, reduction. And uh, so our proposals, those we have made, concern. Thank you. And the next question goes to the gentleman in the third row. Peter Fritz aus Wien, da noch immer sehr skeptisch, auch äh, wie ich schon vor einigen Jahren war, was eine Lösung dieser Frage betrifft. Aber ich glaube, dass in anderen Fragen, nämlich was den Fokus auf den Außengrenzschutz, auf uh, we had today, so it makes part of the overall package concerning the EU uh, reform. Thank you. We'll take one. No. Thank you. 